What's going on guys? This is Wills with another Benizi Android car stereo install and review. This one is the 10.1 inch double din touchscreen we're going to review today. It's very similar to the one that I reviewed last video. So go ahead and check that video out as well. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. This unit boasts a 1024 by 600 viewing screen. So that's pretty large to have in your vehicle. Just by looking at the back here, you can tell that it's exactly like the other Benizi Android unit. Um, nothing's different except it has like this kind of a carbon fiber type of finish on the back of it. You will also get another card that'll get you 10 bucks back on the unit. Just go ahead and go to Benizi's site and follow the instructions in the card and get your 10 bucks. Okay, here's the cable pack. Um, very similar to the last unit. Um, there is the GPS cable. There is no Wi-Fi adapter. It's all built in. That's the camera in cable. That is audio out right and left. Come on, autofocus. There we go. This is the harness in that attaches it all to the unit. Um, here's the other harness to it. I'm not going to go through every single wire that connects but you can either reference the manual that comes with it and there's a built-in manual in the unit that's one of the usb cables there's a, there's another one around here somewhere hold on where are you where are you ah, there we go there we go two usb cables um they can be used for external media or you can plug in like an Android phone to one of the USBs and do like the phone link thing which I'll demonstrate later well I'll show you how to do it by Wi-Fi not by USB because I couldn't get that to work last time gonna be using my wills box right here to connect the stereo and power it on and get all the apps installed this is a power supply from an old computer you just get the black wire and a green wire splice them together Man, that autofocus splice those two wires together and then on the other end, come on, show the other end. Connect the red and the yellow to the yellow of the box and ground both of them. Here's kind of a quick comparison of what they look like. Side by side, there's a huge difference. But as you can tell, everything on the back is pretty much the same. All right, let's get it powered on. This is what it looks like when you boot it. Um, when you cut the car off and you cut it back on, it loads up a lot quicker. So this is how it would load up from like never being loaded up before essentially um seemed like it was about maybe 10 to 12 seconds come on we're almost there all right there it is so pretty much the same luscious screen as the last one taking a look at the settings here it's pretty straightforward there's gps you can get into the Android settings, which will look just like a phone. Um, volumes there. You got your brightness set up. I like mine to be all the way up. Navigation, you can turn it on to boot with the unit or not. Those are your steering wheel functions. And how to change the boot logo for cutting it on. And there goes the float bar, handbrake, steering, screen, screen setting, and reverse settings. Dang. I hate that little float bar thing. And system info. So right here you can see that it does have 2 gigs of RAM. Well, has 2 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage. Right off the bat, I had to go into the Play Store and update some of the core Google applications that come with the unit. This is the same type of procedure you would do like on an Android phone or something like that. You can swipe down from the top of the unit to see the status of the updates. Taking a look at some of the preloaded apps, this is pretty much what you get. Again, the same exact apps that come pre-installed on the 7 inch. All right, so this is what YouTube would look like on the unit. It works pretty quick. Um, again, I'm connected to my home Wi-Fi network, 
so I'm not on the road using my phone with this, but YouTube works pretty good. Oh, there's a little buffer in there, but it works. Yeah, it's not perfect, and it can lag a little bit, but see, as you can tell, it's working. I got a video going there in the lower right-hand corner, but it works. It'll get you by if you need to watch some YouTube on like your lunch break or something, or your smoke break or something like that. You can check out Will's World Media. It's a great channel. It also plays YouTube Kids app as well. If you got kiddos in the car that uh, you can't really control, you need them to be preoccupied with something, there's YouTube Kids. Setting up Bluetooth is very simple. Just hit the search button, find your phone, punch in the code 0000, and you're connected. If you're looking to play games on this unit, you're going to have to update the Google Play Games install to get everything rolling. Um, this game, my kid plays on a phone with a controller. It does not work with the controller, but it works on the unit pretty good, as you can tell. Here's another game that I play. Um, my kid doesn't play this one, but I play this one sometimes with the controller as well, like a Bluetooth controller. And for the life of me, I could not get that control of the pair. So the games work, the controller doesn't. Maybe you have to try like another Bluetooth controller, but the one I have, which is this one, does not work. Ouch. Ow. So yeah, some first person shooters work if you're into that kind of thing. Here's the radio. Nothing too fancy here. Just kind of searching, um, but I don't use it. I got a 16 gigabyte USB um, flash drive plugged up to it right now, and I'm just testing a couple movies, making sure that they work. It plays MKVs, AVIs, MP4s, um, WMVs. Pretty much every file that I've tested works. Jumping around on the timeline for the videos is pretty smooth. It's working that little two gigabytes of RAM. Let's go ahead and fire up the music app. It works pretty quick and it will even scan your thumbstick to find all the music on it and it'll organize it and sort it for you. The built-in map application has Google Maps by default. It works fairly well. Um, I've got it on the GPS right now. So it's pretty smooth. It gets the job done. All right, let's take a look at the photos here on the external USB drive and let's try to change the background. Um, from the looks of things, the image cannot be any higher than the 1024 times 600 resolution. So stick with that. It actually says online if you go any higher than that, the unit could be dead. I swear that's what it says. Look on Amazon. So let's go ahead and get this cropped up. Come on. There we go. Right about there. Let's go ahead and save it. Setting the wallpaper. Let's go back to the home screen to see how it fits. Okay. Okay. It looks good. It's not slowing anything down. It's high res. Perfect. Let's go ahead and change the picture to more of like a portrait form picture. That's the Colorado incline, by the way. I did a video about that. Check it out, Comac and I. So this one's a little different because it's a different type of uh, picture framing. But let's save it. Go home. Ah, it doesn't look bad. It's got like a earthly vibe to it. I feel right at home. All right, moving along. This is the DPM app. It is very resource intense. Um, it's pretty fun if you like making music inside the car. Check the app out. Let's go ahead and jump into the phone link area here. This is one of the most challenging 
parts of the unit that I've had. I can't get Android phones to work. Um, my Android phone might be too old or cheap. I'm not sure. I don't really use Android phones, but I do have a spare. I typically use iPhones, and that connects with no problem. So I'm just going to do that just to demonstrate. Uh, my phone's already connected to the same Wi-Fi that the unit's connected to. So just slide up on your iPhone and click the AirPlay mirror button, as I'll show you here. So go ahead and click it, and voila. You've got your phone mirrored to the unit. And I ain't gonna lie, guys, it doesn't work flawlessly. I mean, it works, but as you can see me jumping around here, it's not the quick, well, right now it looks pretty quick, but when I fire up a video, it struggles. So let's kind of go to the best YouTube channel on the planet real fast. All right, so pulling up a video. Yeah. I'm on a home network right now and you see what's going on. So using like 4G, 3G, or even 5G, I'm not sure if this is gonna be a solid solution. There's the landscape mode. Um, so it does that, but again, it's, it's not solid. It works, it's not solid. If you guys figured the Android part out, go ahead and drop something in the comments. I'll give another shot, but yeah, it's, it's dead in the water at this point. So I'm just kind of scrolling through my phone's pictures, seeing how responsive it is. It's not bad, that part works just fine. Um, yeah, so far so good. Let's take a look at Instagram and see how that works. Okay, that's pretty smooth. Go ahead and follow me at Instagram. I'm at Culture. Yeah, that's pretty smooth right there. So yeah, Instagram works. If you want to, for some reason, mirror your phone and look at IG on your phone, and hey, it works. I tried testing, what is that, Amazon Prime Video, and this is what happened endless buffering and it never connected and I waited and waited and waited and it did that dang here's the built-in manual I was referencing earlier it takes you through the basics it's nice it's there I went with Hulu just to test it out for all you Huluers out there Netflix on this unit does not work. I tried looking in the app store for it. Netflix is not there. Um, that doesn't mean you probably couldn't install an APK from somewhere else and test it, but I didn't do that. I just went official through the Play Store and Netflix is not available, just like the 7-inch. But as you can see, Hulu is nice and, nice and crispy. Jumping from video to video was a seamless transition. Um, this unit has a quad-core processor, so it's powerful enough. Went ahead and fired up the Google Chrome app just to kind of get an idea how it functions. That's not actually bad. Well, it's just the splash screen. Let's see if I can go to something kind of cool. I like YouTube. Why not? And while you're sitting here waiting for this to load up, which wasn't that bad, go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you like. Um, and subscribe. Why not? I got more of these videos coming soon. I know you guys, some of you guys out there watch my vlogs, you're probably like, what the heck are these videos? But hey. But taking a look at this, this, is, this isn't bad at all. I can rock with it. Last but not least, I had to bust out the good old PlayStation 2. Um, this unit obviously has video in and out. So um, with the in, you can plug in a PlayStation 2, Xbox, anything that has um, like a video cable, video RCAs, it'll work. I don't actually play PlayStation while I drive. I don't even have a PlayStation in the car. But it's nice to play games on a 10.1 inch screen. 
Um, and as far as this PlayStation 2, don't ask me how this was set up because I did it over 10 years ago and I don't remember. But if I do, of course, I'll make another video out of it for you guys that are uh, the gamers. The unit also comes with a four channel equalizer with about eight or nine presets. So it's not that technical as far as the sound optimization. Overall, the sound quality in a vehicle, it's pretty good. The subwoofers, they pound pretty hard. It's not as bright and clear as maybe like a Pioneer or a Kenwood or something just more high quality, but it'll definitely get the job done. Here's a quick look at the calculator if you need to do some calculations while not driving, of course. Here's a calendar just to see if you got any hot dates coming up. So that's it. There's not much more I can talk about. Um, pretty much identical to the 7 inch except obviously it's 10.1 this one came with 32 gigabytes of internal storage as opposed to the 16 from the 7 inch again shout out to Benizi or Benaiz I'm still not sure how to say the name correctly but um, they're a great company I really like their products so um, I highly recommend it if you're looking for something that's about $130, $40 for the 10 and less than $100 for the 7, which probably most people can even get to fit in their cars. Um, I had an issue trying to get this into my RSX. It kind of covered up some of the controls, but again, I recommend it. Check it out. Like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.